Hi, Dr. P here with a rule of thumb that I think always applies to game design. Consider simple games, games with deep gameplay, and short games. Well, when you design a game, you can have two out of three, but not all three. This is a well-known rule of thumb in other disciplines. The original that I recall is for building large edifices, buildings. Fast, cheap, according to specs, you can have two out of three. And a variation of that, quick, cheap, good, you can have two out of three. A form that I devised, computer networks, long distance, fast, cheap, you can have two out of three. In project management, the saying is, on budget, on time, on spec, you can have two out of three. In other words, in most projects, something will slip no matter how hard everyone tries. And maybe that's because of unrealistic expectations to begin with. So in games, simple, deep, short, you can have two out of three. And by deep, I'm referring to gameplay depth, not variety. Yes, you can have something that's simple, short, and has a lot of variety. Why is it impossible to get all three? Well, because you have to think. Games can be simple and have deep gameplay, but they can't be short because you've got to have time to think. Something's got to give. Short games tend to become bagatelles as they get shorter and shorter. The definition of bagatelle, a thing regarded as too unimportant or easy to be worth much consideration. In other words, something that isn't worth bothering with to me, except as a social activity. And I'm looking at games as intellectual exercises, not mere social activities. So gameplay depth is hard. The essence is thinking, and thinking is hard. Henry Ford, the original Henry Ford, said, Thinking is the hardest work there is, which is the probable reason why so few engage in it. People tend to live by rules of thumb, heuristics, and of course what I'm describing to you right now is a rule of thumb, but it's one that I think in games always applies. So, especially as the game hobby has gained more players, people are more likely to avoid games that require hard thinking. So, when a designer has to choose his two out of three, what usually goes by the boards is gameplay depth. We see many hobby games taking on characteristics of party games. We see the average player being less and less skilled at actual game playing. They tend to rely on social skills, as in werewolf or resistance. They tend to play games to find out how they work, rather than to become really good at playing them or master them, and then they move on to the next game, game after game after game after game. People don't play many games over and over. Almost all games they play once or maybe two or three times and that's that. And that's partly because games are valued as social activities rather than intellectual exercises worthy of attention and study. Accessibility rules the roost. Now I'm going to take my game Britannia as an example and keep in mind it was designed essentially in 1980, so a long time ago. It's not short. In fact, it's four to five hours with experienced players. It is fairly simple to play. play. It's very asymmetric and that requires some intricacy, if not complexity. It is deep, very deep gameplay, and that has enabled people to play this game, which again is four to five hours, over 500 times. Not me, but other people that I know. So, it's deep but it's not short. In games you can always try to achieve all three goals, but I think it's impossible if you're being honest with yourself. Thanks for listening.